isosceles triangles. We identified and decided what an isosceles triangle was back in the beginning of this unit. Now we're going to do a little bit further study on them. If you remember, an isosceles triangle is a triangle in which two sides, which we call legs, are congruent to each other. In this picture, we have the leg on the left and the leg on the right congruent to each other. There are some other parts of an isosceles triangle that we should know the names of. First off, we have the vertex angle. That is the angle that is formed by the two legs. If I trace the leg on the left side, follow that by tracing the leg on the right side, you'll notice I just made an angle at the top of this triangle. That is called the vertex angle. The other two angles are a little bit easier to identify. That is the base angles. The base angles are always across or opposite the legs. So if we have the leg on the right side here, if I draw an arrow pointing away from that, I'm going to be pointing at this angle. Then if I point with an arrow from the other leg, I point at the other base angle. We have two base angles and two legs of an isosceles triangle. So here we have a few definitions. If the two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the two angles opposite those sides are congruent. What we're saying is if this side on the left measured 6 in it, inches and the one on the right measured 6 inches and this angle down here let's just say was 52 degrees, that would mean that this angle opposite it would also have to be 52 degrees. When the two sides are the same length, then the two base angles have the same angle measure. This is true for the opposite. If the two angles are congruent, let's say we have, again, 52 degrees and 52 degrees for our two base angles. So we have base angle is congruent, and then I found out that this side here was 7 inches. That would mean this side over here would also have to be 7 inches. When the base angles are congruent, the sides are congruent. When the sides are congruent, the base angles are congruent. That is the basic principle of being an isosceles triangle. Now do not confuse the isosceles triangle with an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle is a triangle in which all sides are equal. The isosceles triangle, we only have two. And also remember that our equilateral triangle is also equiangular. And the angles of an equilateral, equiangular triangle will always be 60 degrees. All three angles will have the exact same measurement. All three of them will be 60 degrees. That is the only way you can have an equilateral triangle, which is an equiangular triangle. It's the only way that an equiangular triangle will exist is if it's equilateral. Here we have a problem. We have DE is congruent to CD, BC is congruent to AC, and we have a measurement of an angle. We want to find the measurement of another angle. The first thing you should do with these types of problems is mark the given information onto the picture. We have DE congruent to CD. DE congruent to CD. Immediately, as soon as I see that, I realize I have an isosceles triangle. Because of these two marks, I know that this angle right here and this angle right here must be congruent. They would be considered the base angles. If the two sides of this triangle are congruent, then the two base angles also must be congruent. Let's continue with the given information. BC is congruent to AC. BC is congruent to AC. Notice I used two tick marks for these because I've already used one over here and I do not know that these pieces BC 
and CD are the same size. So I need to dis differentiate, so I'll use two marks over here. Again, I have an isosceles triangle, which means I must have, again, base angles congruent. Notice I used two arcs here because on the other triangle, I used one arc for the angles. We've marked a lot of information simply based on two statements. Next, we're told that CDE, CDE, the angle where my cursor is at right now, is 120 degrees. So let's write that information in. We have an angle up here, which is 120 degrees. Now we want to find this angle BAC over here. If we think back to what we learned about triangles as they have to add up to 180 degrees, that's going to help us a lot. We also need to remember that we have two angles that are going to be the same size. I'm going to call this angle X and this angle also X. I now can create an algebra equation to solve this question. 120 plus I have two X's must equal 180 degrees because those three angles must because of the triangle sum theorem add up to 180 degrees. Solving this I will get X equals 30. Now I can erase my X's on my picture and put in what I know that measurements to be which is 30 degrees. That hasn't got us to our answer yet, but it's gotten us closer. We hopefully remember vertical angles now so I can put 30 degrees over here. Now I have another isosceles triangle. I'll call these two angles Y. I know that 2Y plus 30 is also going to equal 180 because of the triangle sum theorem. 2y is going to be equal to 150 and y equals 75. I now know that angle y is 75 degrees and angle x is 30 degrees. And if we look at our picture, angle B, A, C is angle y. So we've answered the question. Our next and final question is, find the lengths of all three sides of this triangle. Well, as we look at the information, there doesn't seem to be enough to do anything. Don't just guess and start making things equal to each other. It's an easy way to make mistakes. You have to use one of our rules, our definitions, our theorems, or our postulates. As I look at the picture, I notice I have an angle in the bottom corner equal to an angle in the top corner. That means I have an isosceles triangle, which means this side and this side, which I just marked with the two, two green tick marks, must be congruent to each other. Since they're congruent to each other, I can set them equal to each other. Now that we have this set equal to each other, we can solve our equation. And x equals 22. Now that we know what x equals, we can plug it into all three angles. But before we go on, I better correct my math error. 11. Much better answer. Now let's substitute that in. 3 times 11 is 33. 33 plus 15 will give me 48. Now you substitute it in on the other two sides and see what you get. Hopefully, you should get 48 for this one because they're the exact same measurement. It is always a good idea. Do not just assume that you have the right number. Plug it into the equation or the expression that you have and make sure that your two sides are equal. Now, this is an isosceles triangle from what we can tell. So when we plug in that 11 for the other side, we get 59. 
it's not an equilateral, therefore we know that we have 48, 48, and 59. That is the end of the lesson on 4-6. Make sure, as usual, mark down any questions you have and bring them back to me in class, and I'll be happy to help you with them.